we realized pretty early on it was a military plane because uh, people were in flight suits, green flight suits. Looked out and we could see the big tires and the big engines and big pieces and you knew, like you said, it wasn't a small plane. Debris was actually in two different fields, right. probably 30 acre fields. I was actually working as a mechanic at a repair shop down here on 26. The explosion shook the building and the dust actually came down off the beams. It was coming up 194 and papers coming down out of the sky. But I don't think any of us were ready for what we saw. You had a field and then you had railroad tracks and then another field. We found eight bodies, I remember very, pretty quickly. And then um, when Woodsburg came in, they came in in the, in the other field and they found six. We had, we had 14. And about that time is when the uh, Central Alarm finally got connections with Leesburg and uh, found out that it was 21 uh, on the plane. Started another search to try to find you know, the other six. And, and we happened to look over against the tree and here was a body that had been, you know, was actually just smoldering uh, against the tree. And, you know, so we had found the 16th one. And um, uh, we never did find the other five, but then they, they brought a, uh, some backhoes from Fort Dietrich out to um, find where the cockpit had buried itself. I think it was 24 feet in the ground. I remember the long tones. It just seemed like they would never end. And its tones were still going off. And we went up the road and up 194, and we went through, I guess it was a rye field or a wheat field or something, but barley. the wheat barley. Yeah, barley. It was, you know, so tall and everything. And I'm thinking, where is it? You know, and then we saw it. And so we knew we were there. When we got there, I uh, actually went to Vaughn um, because he had command and asked him what he wanted us to do. And, and I remember him telling me to, to gather the people, get them in a line, and um, actually anything you could find to mark the areas. And that's what we started doing. We actually lined up across the field and started making a line down across. And, and uh, that's when we started, like Susan said, we started finding you know, these big tires, and you knew this just wasn't any little Cessna plane. This mm -hmm. was something, yeah. you know. And again, we see how, you know, the um, incident command structure has been since then. And that's one thing, I guess, that was such a disappointment to me was uh, there was no, um, uh, I'd say, working cooperation between all the different services, state police, fire department, EMS, Air Force. Fort Dietrich then responded because they were the closest military institution and uh, again it was very difficult not having the same radios uh, and not really knowing who was in charge at that point to know you know where we were gonna and how we were gonna proceed. I think we were lucky because we had a debriefing and that was the first time and we realized that all of our feelings that we were in memories were normal mm -hmm. and that we shouldn't fight them and that we should go along with and work through it and what to look for as far as depression and things like that. Uh, I think that was, that we were very fortunate. That was the first time I'd ever experienced something like that. But it's still, whenever it's cloudy or it's rainy, it's overcast and I hear a plane go over, I still, it's like a flashback, which now I know is normal. And I saw a plane go over the other day. It was the same kind that was, that had crashed and it was, uh, brought back a lot of memories. It stayed with us, or at least stayed with me for yeah. a, for a long time. I can remember, you know, playing ball out there, and you see a plane come over, and you just look up out, and you just hope it stays up there. You know, you just you just did not want to see anything like that again. You know, because it was just uh, just something that you know you know you, you live through, but you don't want to live through it again. You'd rather not ever have to see something like that. It's just uh, it was you know just just something that you know. You, it, it's undignified, you know, to, to see people in that type of shape. It's just, you know, it's the part of the things that we deal with in the fire service. You know, we we see a lot of things, and we, you know, that, <coughs> that you, uh, you know, that you just can be hard to it, or you know, it's just something that you learn to deal with. And you, yes, we all we all think about it. We still see those thoughts in our, you know, those pictures in our minds of what that stuff looked like. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that we have to. You, know, you just got to move on. You got to still do this job.
there's not a day I didn't go up 194 and think about that plane crash. Mm -hmm. Every day I go up there, uh, again, my aunt lived right across the street from it. Uh, very fortunate, that, you know, that it landed where it did and no, you know, lives on the ground were lost, uh, which is not the case too frequently. You know, there's usually civilian impact somewhere, but uh, where it did land, you know, somebody was at least watching out for the civilians on the ground. Just some of the things that always struck me that the boots that were not on some of the uh, casualties, uh, boots blown off, um, not uh, damaged in any way, just, you know, the amount of force. Um, and again, I know there's a lot of theories out there, but again, as Vaughn pointed out, there was basically two impact sites, and it, it really does look like, you know, there was an explosion before the, green, the plane hit the ground for a number of reasons. But just the force that, you know, those people uh, endured and, and what happened to them uh, was just, I, I felt, just uh, never seen before, you know, that I'd witnessed anything like that.